everybody welcome back to my channel so since the last video there has been a lot that has happened um so my husband and I um 2017 were trying to get pregnant for about over a year and I didn't really check any ovulation or anything like that and I was like okay so let me order the um they had like ovulation sticks at Amazon that were pretty inexpensive. And so I ordered those and they're just the little pea sticks and you just see if it like turns a certain color if you're ovulating. So that didn't really work. And so we were like, okay, so why don't we try clear blue ovulation stick? And I'll link that down below. So I peed on the stick. It's like you pee within a certain amount of day out of, uh, after your last cycle and then once you see a smiley face that means you're ovulating so after I saw the smiley face that was all she wrote <laughs> one time and then that was it so super exciting um, when we found out we were pregnant um, if you want me to upload a video about how I revealed the pregnancy uh, to my husband uh, Please let me know. Um, so, oh, and I took some notes because so much happened after that. It was pretty crazy. Okay, so pregnant, excited, you know, excitement, telling family and everything like that. Then six weeks hit um, when I was six weeks pregnant. And I started all of a sudden feeling absolutely exhausted. Um... I mean, like me, I like doing stuff around the house. I love, I don't know, I just get excited about doing certain things around the house. And to not be able to do that, I was just, I was zonked out. It was terrible. So that happened. And then all of a sudden, probably a week after, I felt that exhaustion. So like seven week, eight week pregnancy, I started getting sick. And that's what we call the um, pregnancy nightmare. That's what me and my husband call it because it got crazy really fast. Um, so what happened was I started getting really sick. I started throwing up 13 to 14 times a day. Um, I couldn't really eat barely anything. Um, I got so weak. I would have to tell my husband he could pick me up some crackers and applesauce, and he was just so amazing. I mean, he was just my nurse, the house person taking care of the home, taking care of the animals, taking care of me, because I just was practically on bed rest. It was crazy. So um, he would give me applesauce and crackers, and so that I would get something in my body, because I couldn't keep anything down because I was throwing up so much. <coughs> so we went to my doctor's, my OB, and he said that I'm pretty sure that I have, I think it's called HG, um, on my notes, it says, let's see, hyperemesis vardium, um, which was pretty crazy <laughs> because usually your nausea and throwing up stops probably after, I think it's like the first trimester, second trimester is supposed to start feeling better. But no, it didn't. It kept going. And then we were like, hey, let's try the preggy pops and the ginger candies and, you know, see if these home remedies are going to work. But none of them worked. I was just throwing up. It was absolutely terrible. I wanted to eat certain foods and I couldn't because I would just keep getting sick. Um, so then, um, oh, and every time we would go to the OBGYN, sometimes... We couldn't go because I would get sick and weak, and I felt like I was going to pass out. It was so crazy. Um, but So then we asked my OB for nausea medicine. Got the nausea medicine. Um, it did help, but pretty much all I did for eight months was lay in bed, sleep, eat. Lay in bed, sleep, eat, and throw up every so often. So what would happen is my husband would give me my medicine when I would wake up about every two, maybe four hours. I would take my medicine, and then that medicine would make me fall back to sleep. Not only constipation, really bad, <laughs> but um, yeah, I was dealing with that too because of the anti-nausea medicine. So it was pretty crazy. It was definitely a nightmare. Um, 
And thank goodness my husband is able to stay home with me. I really couldn't have done it without him. I would have had to stay with family. It was that bad. Um, so as that was going on, um, I'm trying to see here. I remember the the things that we would go get would be like mashed potatoes from KFC because that was like one of the things that I could keep down. Um, everything else I would kind of get sick and not do too good. Um, also, my sense of smell got really bad. Like, I couldn't use certain detergents. Um, I would tell my husband, can you please get different detergent? And we had to change the sheets because it was so bad it would make me feel sick. Um, so we did that. Um, let's see. Oh, and it was like, it was so weird because then I started getting heartburn. And the heartburn would then cause me to get sick. So then I had that, and I was getting sick. And my OB was very concerned about me um, getting very dehydrated. So we had, he had a prescription for at-home care come and just give me IV fluids and also a Zofran pump too. Um, so they started doing that because I was actually very dehydrated. I would check my ketones and stuff like that, which was kind of crazy. Um, so we had them for maybe a week and a half. She set me up and then I had all the supplies and everything for maybe a week and a half. Um, then at the eight month mark, my nausea started to slow down a little bit, which I was very grateful. I started throwing up probably like three times. Oh, three times a day. Um, and, but then I started getting excess saliva. Oh, before that even happened, before the eight months happened, I think I went to the hospital around six times because I couldn't stop throwing up. It was that bad. And because I had super constipation and it was really bad and it's very scary and very painful. So I had to deal with that too. But when I went to the hospital, they were amazing. They were right across the street from us and they helped me ease my stomach and, and all that fun stuff. So we had a lot of visits to the hospital too, which was not very much fun. But getting back to the eight months, so the eight months I started having excess saliva. So what I would do is I would have a spit cup. I actually had a box where I would put my spit cup in because we had some incidences where the spit cup would fall, which is not good. So the box kept it stable. <laughs> Um, but so I dealt with that or I would have like a washcloth. We ordered a bunch of washcloths from Amazon and I would stick it under my tongue so I didn't have to keep spinning. I could like at least lay there and have it soak in the washcloth. So yeah, we had that. Um, but I was grateful because I wasn't throwing up as much. So I was feeling so much better. Wasn't obviously myself yet. I was very weak. I mean, excessively weak. It was really bad. Like, I would want to do stuff, and I might be able to do just a little bit, but I really couldn't do anything. Um, so that was really hard on me, too. Because I, I feel like I just, I like to do certain things. Um, oh. So then, this was kind of rough, too. I all of a sudden started getting really bad restless legs. Um, for restless legs, it would start... At, I don't know why, but it would start at 11 p.m. at night. I could start feeling the, the restless legs. And then what I would have to do is go downstairs and walk the floor until like sometimes 4 a.m. It was crazy because um, I was exhausted. And I would happen pretty much almost every night. We tried so many things to help it. Um, these compression leg socks. Um, this like, I think it's a, this menthol rub, um, potassium, potassium usually helps. Um, I tried iron supplements, but then that constipation, which isn't good. Um, we even tried this weird thing cause we were just, I mean, we, when I say we, my husband would rub my legs. He was, he was in this journey with me. It was crazy. Um, so, yeah, then I did this whole thing with an ice bath where I put my feet in the ice water and maybe that would shock my I don't, I don't know. It would help sometimes for like 20 minutes and it would be awesome. So I told my OBG, um, OBGYN about it. And they prescribed me, but it wasn't for my restless legs. It was because I was anemic on my iron. Um, 
they prescribed me to go get an iron infusion. So, cause my, I was so weak. And so I went and got an iron infusion and I think I went once a week for five weeks. I think after the third week, cause it takes time to set in and stuff. My restless legs were pretty much gone. I was absolutely amazed. It was like, oh my gosh, I can finally sleep. It was crazy. So now I know. And now we know if I ever get restless legs down the road and it won't stop, it's uh, iron infusion time. Um, but yeah. So then um, the pregnancy was getting better. I was almost due. I was, I think, yeah, I was almost a week past my due date. So me and my husband are just waiting and like getting ready to have our sweet baby boy. Um, but so what happened was on November the 16th, early in the morning, I, my husband told me to stop rolling so much on the bed because I was trying to get comfortable. I was like, stop rolling <laughs> because you could have your water break. Um, but so I rolled once and then all of a sudden I was like, uh oh, am I peeing? I'm like, oh no, what's going on? <laughs> but it, I, my water didn't break. It was the other thing. It's like, sorry, TMI stuff. <laughs> it was, I think it was mucus plug stuff. I believe it was that. And I was like, oh my gosh, babe. Oh, look. <laughs> so then um, we're like, okay, I'm not really having any contractions. Let's just see how I feel and everything. Then I started getting some contractions, maybe an hour after that. They were getting strong, but they weren't super regular. So we're like, okay, why don't you go to sleep? Cause it was like two o'clock in the morning. So I went to sleep and then I woke up probably around five o'clock and they were getting regular and strong. And I was like, babe, I think it's time to go. We had our bags already and everything. I touched up a little bit before we left. Um, so then we went to the hospital. It was really dark outside and the roads were icy. Um, especially on the bridges going to the hospital. And there was actually a lot of accidents, which was crazy. So we got to the hospital. They asked us to, um, cause they checked me to see if I was dilated. And I believe I was two centimeters dilated. They're like, why don't you walk for a couple hours around, you know, where we were and stuff. And it's like, okay, so I started doing that. But man, those contractions started to get really bad. So, um, I walked around, um, and then I came back, but not for two hours because they were getting rough. They checked me again. I think I was at four centimeters, four or three centimeters. And they're like, okay, we're admitting you. You're good. And I was like, the attractions are so rough. I'm like, okay, epidural, the epidural, you know, and they're like, okay, don't worry. We're going to get you the epidural. We're scheduling it. So then they transfer me to another room. Um, the lady with epidural comes in, very sweet, I was very scared. Um, I had to hold on to the nurse's hand <laughs> because I said no. I was going to, like, hold on to trip, but I was like, they're like, no, hold on to the nurse's hand, and I feel like I almost broke her fingers because I was so scared. <laughs> but um, it went fine, just a little bit of pressure in my back. It was just a different feeling. It really wasn't that bad at all. And then after that, oh, man, I felt so good. I took a nap. And Tripp was just hanging out, and we were watching cartoons <laughs> in our room. It was amazing. So they got me the epidural, I think, around 7.30. So we got there at 5. And they gave a, I mean, I was, you know, epidural and everything around 7.30. So got to rest. So um, I think around noon or so, they were noticing that I wasn't dilating as, like, as much. Um, and so they said, okay, so then, whoop. <laughs> okay, so then they gave me the Pitocin to increase my contractions and so that I would dilate a little more quickly. Um, so I think after an hour, maybe two hours after the Pitocin, I was dilating pretty well. Um, I know that around 7 o'clock was when I was ready to push. I think I was like 9 centimeters dilated. So just think noon to 7, I mean 7 hours, but... So, ready to push everything, um, and I was ready to have this baby boy. So, 
I was like, okay, let's push. And I pushed in 20 minutes, and we had our sweet little baby Essen, who was just so amazing, so grateful. Um, it's pretty neat. It's, it's like you don't even realize it just this amazing blessing until you, I mean, you realize it, but you, when you have that baby in your arms, it's like, it's like a dream. It's so crazy. So yeah, we have our sweet baby boy. Um, he was born around 7.30 at night, uh, seven pounds, not seven pounds, eight pounds, 12 ounces. But yeah, he is so amazing. And now I understand pregnancy amnesia a little bit. Um, not that we will go through this again, but when you see that sweet little baby and they're just smiling and laughing and it's like, oh my gosh, we gotta do, you know, we have to have more kids after this. But yeah, so crazy pregnancy at the end, just a healthy, blessed baby. We're blessed to have this baby. But yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to start uploading my videos more frequently. Um, now that I'm not sick feeling anymore, I feel really good and just enjoying life and going to be doing some vlogs, cleaning, um, decor, uh, all that fun stuff. So please like and subscribe and hope you guys have a great week. Bye.